Perfect. You're recording. I'll mute out. Thank you and good evening, everybody. My name is Steve Morley. I'm here as the corporate guy in uh, Zinzino, UK. Um, tonight, it's a very proud honor to introduce a guy I met a few months back. He joined Zinzino literally a month ago. Um, from the moment I met him, um, I just felt a connection and uh, what he's done and what he's doing for Zinzino is unbelievable. You know, Zinzino UK in less than a year has more than 10,000 customers and our product and our tests are the best in class. And for that, we need support. And this guy has come in as uh, his doctor, a PhD. He's in Zeno's global scientific researcher. Colin, uh, Colin, Mr. Colin Robinson or Carl, uh, welcome to the call tonight. Brilliant, thanks Steve. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. And the, the amount of people who are here to listen to me speak, um, to have a chat really is overwhelming. And I can't thank you enough. It's really, really kind of you to take time out of your, of your day, of your evening. Uh, to listen in, really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, brilliant. Colin, first question for you tonight, uh, straightforward to the point. What, in your opinion, sets, in, uh, sets Cinzino products apart from other products on the market? Wow. So we're going straight in. Straight in. Okay. Um, I'm, I am not known for giving straight answers, by the way. Not, not politician-like. I will answer. But I'm, I'm very rare to say it's because of this. So to answer that, um, kind of the reason, what sets it apart is the reason why I'm here is because I am, my background is hardcore science. I don't believe in any crank ideas. I don't believe in anything that we can't evidence with imperial evidence-based peer-reviewed research. That's, that's what I'm all about. That's what all my training has been about, all my education. That's what I believe in. And so for a long, long time, I didn't have a great opinion of the supplement industry because the supplement industry on large could, could have been doing better, was always my take. And also a lot of people were getting told, this is really from elite sport, a lot of people were getting told to take a lot of things that I just disagreed with. I didn't, I didn't believe they needed to take it. And then time is a great educator and you start to move forward. And I have to say that a big part of my role has, has always been working on huge health initiatives, trying to get people to, to be healthier, to make better choices. And it's hard. It's hard because there's so much working against us. So I think the first time I, I ever used this phrase was about four years ago. I was at a conference, I think I was in the States, and, and I said, we have the technology to do food better, so why aren't we doing it? Why are we letting that technology sit in the hands of people that are, are purely interested in profit? And I've got nothing against people making money, but you know, the world should be fed. And the world should be healthy because we know how to do it. So I said that I think about four years ago was the first time, if I remember. And then typical to me, I've said it about 50 times since. And when I became made aware of Zinzino, and I won't repeat that story because I think I've, I've said it so many times. I looked at Zinzino with skepticism. I thought, right, I'm going to have a look and it'll be another one to add to my list of going, yeah, it's just another supplement company you know, whatever. And it wasn't. So I was working on an epigenetics project. I was actually looking at omega-3s, um, nothing to do with supplementation, purely looking at the diet. And I was asked to look at Zinzino by a friend of mine. And I was, I was, I was literally blown away because more often than not, as a researcher, we're trying to find really good questions so that we can find really good answers. And I remember distinctly here at home in my, in my study, looking at the website and going, wow, I think I found an answer. These guys seem to be doing it. And um, this looks like it's it. So what sets it apart is the fact that, and this is the way I've started to describe it to people over the past month or so. Think of Zinzino products as simply just really intelligent great quality food especially you know what really won me over was the philosophy of all natural 
you know, when when the company the company decided to do that before I got here. But as a part of the conversations I had about joining the company, this was right at the front, all natural. We want to move to all natural. That that's really hard to achieve. It's hard to achieve if you're a brand new company. It's even harder to achieve if you've already made a start and you're doing certain things really well and certain things well. And you go, no, we're going to change everything. It's all going to be all, all natural because the impact of foodstuffs, you know, of, of vitamins, minerals, of fiber that comes from naturally derived sources versus synthetic are oceans apart. And here you've got this company, huge company, who have make who made nine tenths of that shift. That's what we're about because we believe it should all be done right. So not only did I think, well, this is this is how it should be done. This is well, this is far advanced to anything I've ever seen on the market, and I've seen them all. Hmm. But also, what they intend to do is just going to accelerate further forward. And what I hope it does is I hope it inspires other parts of the industry to follow suit, because my, my overall ambition is to improve global health here in the UK, all across Western Europe, the, the world. We should all, we, we all have a right to a good life. So I hope it inspires other companies to follow suit. But more importantly, I know that we're a part of a, a system now, a movement that can genuinely improve people's lives. So that's what sets it apart. Everything is backed by research, like you wouldn't believe Honestly, folks, I've only been here five minutes. I'm used to arguing with academics. It's been my background. Arguing with academics. That's what you do. There's an old saying is that academics don't speak. They No, sorry. Academics don't have a conversation. They just wait to speak. And it's true. It's just they have their, they've got their, their camp ready to say their bit. Um, and I thought distancing myself from academics and going to work for a, a big you know, nutrition company it won't be like that. It's worse. I promise you. We have product team meetings and I'm going to start to, sh- if, if we have, the, at the minute it's on Zoom. When they're in person, I'm going to show up with a sword and a shield because <laughs> it's full on. You have to fight to make your point. And it's literally like, well, my research says this and I've got all these papers. Well, I've seen, I, did you see this paper? And after most meetings we have, there is this flurry of us all sending each other our evidence, go and read this one, do that one. But I love it because that's how it should be, because it does matter. And and we sweat the detail over the tiniest thing. I was on this morning with Orion and Ida. I'm sure you've all heard from them, spoken to them. And, you know, it was just the three of us going over the last few details of something, which you might expect would be a case of, all right, this is where we're at, great. Now we were, we were back into the research again. Well, what about this? Because we can get three different types of that. And if we... Honestly, and I love that. So that, that's what sets it apart. I, you know, it's the attention to detail. It's the pursuit of excellence. It is the zero ambition to be second best and the genuine ambition that provide the world with meaningful solutions. And I did warn you all that I never give a straight answer. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. I really appreciate that. Uh, what would you say your overall philosophy regarding good health and how to achieve it is? Accountability. I, I have a phrase that I've used for a long time now, which is that you know people should own their own health. Accountability and ownership. That's that's what health is about. It's about making tough decisions at times. It's about going. I'm not going to have that because I know it's damaging to my health and I am going to take this. I am going to do that because it benefits my health because I would argue that we've normalized poor health to such an extent that it's become so common that people just think that's the way life is. And it's not, I promise you it's not. And, and again, given where we're at as a modern 21st century society, we have the technology, we have the understanding and the know-how for people to live amazing lives and to not be bogged down by factors related to poor health. So it's ownership, accountability, own your own health. Make that, start every day with success. Make that first decision. I always tell everyone, get up, 
go to your wherever you have water in the fridge from the tap. First thing you should do is just drink some water. Wake the system up. The next thing you do, for me, sets the tone. So think about how you're going to break your fast. What's the quality of the first thing you're going to do that day? Because you've already had your success with the water. So now let's back that up with the second phase of success. And if you can, for instance, the habit in our house for the past nine months now is everyone has the royal. First thing we do, drink a water, take your oil. That's me, my wife, three children, all take our oil. That's it. So we've, we've started from a win and then build on that. But it, it comes into everything, doing your physical activity. Um, the things that we avoid eating or that we, we keep to a minimum because we know that they're harmful to us. And then being proactive, hungry in the pursuit of things that are going to do as well and own that situation. No excuses, no blame. Take it by the horns, make it work. That's my philosophy for health. I love that. A lot of nutritionists I've spoke to in the past promote a like fast uh, a food fair strategy. Um, as you're like a reg registered nutritionist yourself, why do you think people should use supplements? I you know the reason why nutritionists promote food first, and I'd say I'd say I do, and I'd say Zinzino do. Zinzino promote food first. You know, you should look at the quality of what you eat, and you should look to eat the best quality food you possibly can. Why do why do I think supplements fit into it? <laughs> because I found supplements that work. If you'd asked me that question twelve months ago, I'd have said there's probably not much out there that's going to give you much help. Asking me that question since April of last year, I've had a different response, a very proactively different response, um, because supplements can make the largely kind of difficult or nigh on impossible easy. You know, I've used this, uh, apologies to anyone who's had to listen to me over the past few weeks, because I use this analogy a lot, but I'm going to use it one more time. For everyone to meet the dietary intake guidelines for optimal health around there, just let's just stick with omega-3s. You're looking at consuming fatty fish, lion caught, wild fatty fish every single day. Great. Ecologically, not going to happen. Um, the quality, the nutrient availability of that fish doesn't stack up. It, it's, just not, it's just not feasible. And then if we look at that on mass, if we look at the fact that we're trying to create parity, so we're going to pull out 7.8 billion fish a day so that everyone has a fish every day. Or we're just going to deal with the modernized world and say, okay, 3.6 billion fish a day to reach everybody per day that they will consume. Not ecologically feasible, completely unattainable. And also I can tell you, because I work with people front and center, people just won't do it. They won't, they, people won't go, yes, I'll eat a really good wild line caught fresh fish every single day. So that's where the ease convenience of the balance oil, for instance, comes into its own because it's got all of that in this much and it tastes pretty good. Bump done. So that's where supplements, for. supplements should supplement your diet. They should enrich it. They should enhance it. They should make the difficult easy. That's where supplements work really, really well. And that's how we've always used them in, in elite sports performance. Let's say, for instance, the common one in elite sports performance is protein intake. Sometimes it's hard to get the amount of protein an elite athlete, athlete needs daily in their diet through food. So we'll supplement that. We look for the best quality protein supplement we can get, and we use it strategically. But health is far more important. Health is far more important making sure that your body is sufficiently provided for with omega-3s, with your beta-glucans, with your essential amino acids, with your, those core vitamins, C, D, B12, B6, the list goes on. It's so difficult. And it's difficult even if you're buying fresh food because of intensive agriculture and agriculture. It's just, it's hard. It's hard. And that, by the way, I'm not criticizing whole industries of agriculture and aquaculture 
they're trying to cater for a huge and ever-growing population. That's a difficult task. The fact is, is we already have the answer and Zinzino are delivering on that answer. So that's where, that's why. And I, and actually, as you might guess, I, I know a lot of nutritionists and I'd, I'd even go as far as to say, yeah, definitely. I know some what I would class to be the best nutritionist in the world, either from the research they do or the work that they do. And the best ones know how to supplement the best way. That's, that's the difference. Um, absolutely love that. Um, apart from taking Zinzino products, Colin, uh, which one thing can people do to enhance their health and well-being? Move every day. You were, you were made to move. You are six and a half million years old as a kind of, you know, since we crawled out the gloop. 300,000 years old since we became this type of species. We're a migratory species. Sedentary behavior is killing us, leading to back pain. It's leading to, you know, heart issues, all kinds of stuff. We're made to move. So move every single day. So, you know, go for a walk. Definitely get outdoors. I'm a huge believer in being in the outdoors, no matter what the weather is. Walk every single day. That 10,000 steps, it seems, you've probably heard of the 10,000 steps day. It seems arbitrary, but it's not. You know, it equates to somewhere between four to five miles. Metabolically, if you were to achieve that most days of the week, in effect, if, if, if weight maintenance is your issue, you're going to lose steadily a pound a week just by achieving that. If weight maintenance is the issue, brilliant, because it's so low level you know, you're going to be working in what we call like a kind of upper zone one, zone two. So you're going to be out there breathing in, great for us, upper respiratory tract. You're putting a load through the system. It's going to be great. Active, dynamic, keeping your metabolism keeping up, ticking over. Lovely. So on top of good nutrition, move every day. Exercise. But, you know, remember you're not. Neither am I. I've worked with them. I've worked with elite rugby players, football players, Olympic athletes, all these kind of people, but I'm not one. Don't need to smash myself to bits just to keep fit and healthy. You can exercise, be physically active. It can be joyful every single time. Put a smile on your face. Do the thing you love. You don't necessarily need to become the master of it. You can change your mind as often as you want. One day yoga, next day Pilates, day after that go for a swim. You don't need to be the best at it in the world. Just do it because you enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy it, do something you do because that's the one you'll stick with. I love that. And uh, personal question. What's your proudest professional achievement, would you say? <laughs> you know what? I was asked... I did, a, I did, I was on a call yesterday that was to do with, I do a lot of work with people who've um, had like really serious conditions in, in rehabilitation. And probably my proudest moment, well, there's, there's three, maybe, yeah, three, who were uh, people who were given terminal diagnoses and I was able to work with them from a nutritional point of view, from an exercise rehabilitation point of view. And we were able to, you know, you never take anything for granted. But one of those was given three months to live, told to go home and sort their affairs out four years ago. He's now a coach for us at the gym we run here on the Wirral, um, works every single day. Um, is awesome, as fit, fit, as, fit as he's ever been in his life. Another one was someone I had no previous experience of, and I gave a talk locally, and her and her husband showed up, and she had a really complex condition. And ultimately, you know, people were scratching their heads. They couldn't get enough nutrition into it, and they knew this was going to be a barrier because of absorption, because of the, of the surgery she'd had. And she had two children. So, you know, you think, right, then we'll, anything we try is going to be something. And again, you know, she's been harassing me since New Year because now she wants to train for a triathlon. You know, incredible. Um, and then another lady who was, you know, early 50s, who again 
was given three months and that was five years ago, five, four and a half years ago. Now back to work, working professionally. I think they're the three proudest because not because we didn't, we didn't do anything that was kind of like proven medicine wrong at all. We, 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 we proved medicine, right. They, they'd been successfully treated it's just that any in, in, there are instances where conditions can be so bad that that has done its course, but it's it's just not enough. And we were able to work in partnership with them and get the rehab and the nutrition right. And yeah, and and they're still they're still here. So I think that that's that'd go on my list as the proudest things that I've ever done. Yeah, if it's on a lighter note, if it's in sport. My mum is from Dublin. Most of my family are from Ireland. I class myself as Irish before I do English. I'm not English, actually. I'm a scouser. Um, and I was able to take the Ireland Rugby League team to the World Cup, Australia, 2008. We got to the quarterfinals, the furthest an international Irish team has ever been in an international competition. And we had an amazing time and got to sing the national anthem four times on the pitch to the world, full hit. So, yeah, the serious stuff. Yeah. If we're talking sport, that'd be the sporting one. And what what do you say your biggest inspirations are when it comes to health and fitness? Um, people. Um, you guys all heard of someone called Laird Hamilton. Laird Hamilton is a a surfer and an insanely handsome chap. And I think he's like over fifty now, and you know, like he's just phenomenal. He has a phrase that I've stolen that I love which he says he's just addicted to feeling good because, you know, he's great. He, he eats well, he exercises every day. He's a lucky so-and-so because he lives right next to the ocean and goes windsurfing and surfing every single day and does amazing stuff. But that's the life he's made for himself. And I just love, I love his take on, on life and the world, which is that whole notion of why wouldn't you do this? This is incredible. It feels great to eat well and to move that is that is addictive. So I, I love that. Um, and then I'm going to list people that you may or may not know because they, they come more from my experience in academia. Professor Don McLaren, who is just an outstanding sports nutritionist. And I was really lucky that when I went to work at Liverpool John Moores University, and which is where I also did my PhD, Don took me under his wing, as he did countless other academics. And I learned so much from Don about nutrition, um, not only from knowing the science, but the hard part. How do you apply it? Because we're working with human beings. And that's what Don was great at, you know, making science applicable. And then there are two more godfathers of sports science. Sadly, these two are no longer with us. Professor Tom Riley, who was just one of the people who invented sports science, a phenomenal, phenomenal person who I was so fortunate and privileged to work with, um, who actually was the person who offered me the, the chance to do a PhD with him, which was a real pinch yourself moment. And then likewise, Professor Jim Waterhouse, who is also ex-Oxford, um, who took me under his wing, who is an environmental physiologist. And I kid you not, both of those people, anytime I had the, the shortest conversation, I would learn something every single time. And they've also taught the world, you know, both of them, hundreds of peer reviewed publications, books, book chapters, you know, phenomenal people. So, yeah, so they're my three. Laird Hamilton, you can find out about him, quick Google, and you'll see all about him. The other two, you'd have to do, those are the three, you'd have to do a little bit more digging. Fantastic. Um, question, specific question I was asked by, uh, by Sue, actually, uh, Diamond with Zinzino. Uh, son plays for a uh, son, godson, sorry, uh, plays for West Ham uh, Academy. He was asking about recovery, uh, how the products can help with recovery from exercise and spoiling injuries. I don't know. If That's a great question. That comes up a lot just recently. Um, and I'll go back before I go forward. So recovery is a huge you are how you recover training adaptation the exercise part don't get me wrong takes a bit of thinking out but the exercise part is almost the easy part how we recover influences how we adapt and when we exercise when we do any kind of training 
It's the adaptation that we want, not the session. It's not about what you do there and then. It's about what that will invoke. And so a lot of people, definitely footballers, rugby players, a lot of athletes get obsessed with protein intake and creatine. And, you know, these are the common go-to things. And they definitely have their part in facilitating adaptation. But before all of that, if you are not right from a cellular point of view, if your chronic inflammatory markers are high, your body is not in a prime state to recover because your body is constantly feeling like it's dealing with some type of issue. So if you imagine, let's say you were able to do an exercise session and you spent 90 minutes doing small sided games. This is commonly used in football. Maybe you'd done some kind of sprint work, whatever it is. And you should get 100% back from that session. You, you've invested your effort. You should get what we call 100% back. If your cellular ratio is compromised, if your inflammatory markers are consistently high, then at best, you're probably looking somewhere 70%. 70% is not bad, is it? But that's a best case scenario. Then you got to think, well, how well am I sleeping? That's a huge in, in indicator with regards to our recovery. What's the rest? What's my nutrition like? Is there sufficient amount of you know D3, vitamin C, B12, B6, beta glucan? What is my protein intake like? Not only the amount, but the quality of it. You know, there are so many things that come into that matrix of looking at whether or not we can create the opportune, the, the optimal environment to recover. And so as happens a lot in life, people get used to the rate at which they get things back. And I think there's a lot of athletes that never really achieve their full potential because they're not maximizing their recovery. You can't recover effectively and wholly if you are not right at a cellular level and if your chronic inflammation is not under control. Acute inflammation is vital. That's what we do. We go, so let's say we're in the gym, we go to the gym, we train, we get stuck in, you know, we, we tear up those muscles, it's what we call catabolism. And what should happen now is the anabolic phase, that muscle repair and build up. So that's what the, the acute inflammatory markers send that message. But if throughout that, we've got this constant chronic state of inflammation, and when those acute ones come down, our chronic ones remain high, the environment, the physiological environment is not primed or prepared to adapt and make best use of what you've just done. So to me, recovery, whether it's from an illness, whether it's from an exercise session, you know, even psychologically, there's a ton of research on that, starts by having these things under control, by making sure we've got an environment within us that is ready to adapt and facilitate recovery and change. Because there's more to it. Some of the younger guys is in the academy. Some of the younger guys don't get this early on, but they, they typically do a little bit later on. If you run the gauntlet of compromising your health for the pursuit of performance, you will run out of runway. Eventually, something goes. The, the structure can only tolerate it for so long. We're only mortal. What you've always got to do is prioritize all those health indices and build your performance off a solid foundation of health, physiological, pathological health. Build it off that. And that's what, you know, this isn't just me preaching. 99.9% .9 of the strength and conditioning coaches, physiotherapists, nutritionists, top sports coaches, they all want that. I, I promise you, you know, that, that, that is what people want. They might not always articulate it that way, but that's the goal. Sometimes though, the pursuit of the result gets in the way. And, and in big, in big money sports, money gets in the way. You know, we've all been there where, the gaffer says, listen, that player has costed me this much a week. I want him back on the pitch. How quickly can you get him back? And, and, and a younger version of me would buckle a little bit to that stress. 
But as you get older, once you've earned your stripes and you know what's going on, you've got more resilience and you're, and you're more able to state your case and go, no, this is why we're doing it this way and why it's going to take a little bit longer because what you're going to get back is a more physically resilient, stronger, more able to cope athlete who's going to play for much, much longer. So to me, recovery starts by optimizing the, the physiological health of the individual. And then from there, you can start to build as high as you want because that's your foundation. You can really start to, and you know, I've been really fortunate, Steve, because I've been able to train people to do just, just like phenomenal things, you know, and I've worked with special elite forces around the world. They're a different breed of human being. Let me tell you. And, you know, anyone who saw that talk I did on Saturday, you know, the wounds that people will pick up in the pursuit of things in extreme environments would pull the wheels off any normal person but we build it all off a mentality of health first you know we get them in such a health optimized condition then we look at those performance factors and we take it all and we know even after that it will take its toll and we need to recover again fantastic and i love the fact as well and this is a kind of a discussion we had previously that you know, you, you get contacted daily, like in terms of from friends and, and other people saying, you know, about this product and can you help me with this product? And uh, I think there's a lot of people who've not heard you before. It'd be great if you could kind of finish just by um, covering again um, how, how you get started with Zinzino and, uh, and, and, and really that's, that's kind of all I, that, that just, I, met that, I love that story and it, it would just be a great, if you don't mind answering that, that'd be great. No, no, not at all. I'm uh, just just to kind of, as the prequel to that. Yeah. Answer, yeah. <laughs> I did tell you that I never just give a straightforward. As the prequel to that answer, um, what what I pride myself on, what and what I take most seriously is the reputation I've built for, and my credibility, you know, because what I, I'm very aware and I hold it in the highest regard that when people ask me for advice and information, more often than not, they're likely to act on it. And sometimes that's a governing body of sport. Sometimes that's a, a medical department. Sometimes that's just an individual, a friend or someone who's reached out to me because they found me through some means. And I take that really, really seriously, really seriously. So I won't, will not, and you can put this on record and tell anyone, I will never put my name to something that I don't 100% believe in at all. Cause I'm the one who'll have to back it up. You know, if someone wants to criticize the outcome of something that they go straight to source, I'll, I'm the person who'll get hung out to dry. So I have to believe in it. So that's why I get brought in by a lot of different agencies and organizations. I'm, I'm working currently at the moment with the uh, advanced clinical practice group here in the UK uh, with regards to health education, England, post-COVID, helping to upskill those practitioners so they better know how to manage people who've had COVID-19 and look at how we can better recover people who've had cancer, cardiovascular disease, all those kinds of things. Um, so I'm, I'm very aware that I need to protect that. Otherwise, that's kind of me professionally and personally done. So on that note, I was working on a project to do it omega-3s. And I was looking at oh, epigenetics. And for anyone who doesn't know, and apologies if you do, <clears throat> epigenetics is really the way in which the things we do um, influences at a genetic level. Now, every single person here, you've got a level of genetic inheritance. So that's what your parents have come together, they've made you, and there's a code that's come down through history and made you who you are and the way you look and everything else. You all know that. Well, epigenetics is all the other stuff. So the choices you make, if you smoke, if you vape, if you drink alcohol, if you drink fizzy drinks, God forbid, um, you know, when you exercise, processed foods, but really good quality foods. And, what, and the stuff I'm interested in are the epigenetics that are really positive and, and enhance the, our, our, you know, our health and enhance our gene behavior, our gene expression. You can't change your genes, but you can change their expression, how they behave. So I was working on a project, omega-3s, because omega-3s are so potent, 
they cross so many areas because the because they're such a fundamental part of human life um and i was here working away in my happy place just me computer bit of music on and the phone rings and when i'm working steve you can qualify this if i'm working on something i won't answer because i'm working on something you might get the i can't speak now i'll call you back shortly automatic response because I'm, I'm working i'm on it but there's a few people who you know kind of get past that barricade for one reason or another and one of those people is a really good friend of mine tony o'neill and tony used to work at under armor adidas bmw he's had big positions in big companies and still does now working with a huge company now and he's had some health issues over the years and he was ringing the phone was ringing and i'd done that bump can't speak now call you back later working away and then i had a break scheduled so it was lovely outside this was the first lockdown when the weather was amazing and I picked up the phone i'll ring tony back and tony said call you're my go-to guy people are always nice to you when they want something from you you're my go-to guy call if you tell me this is legit i'm gonna do it I'm like right what is it tony will you have a look at a product for me now, I promise you, Steve, I promise you, folks, 99.9% .9 of the time, that question will get answered with, no, I'm busy. I've got other stuff to do. I'm not going to go and look at something on the Tinter web for you. But because it was Tony, he said, look, we have a look at a product for me. Someone's told me this could be good for my health. And also, I'm interested in this from a business point of view. He said, I think the business looks really good. And, you know, to put that in context, I'm not a businessman at all. Couldn't even pretend to be. Tony really is. You know, he when I say he's worked at Under Armour, BM, Adidas, high up. You know, you know, he wasn't. You know, one of the people driving around making deliveries. One of the people at the top making decisions. You know, he helped Under Armour become a four billion pound business. So I thought, wow, he's interested in this from a business point of view. And then there's the health part, which, to be honest with you, is more important. So I said, right, what is it? And he said, well, it's something to do with Omega-3. Have you ever heard of them? <laughs> so I was like, funnily enough, <laughs> a project on that just at the moment. And yes, I've heard of Omega-3s. And he's like, I knew you would have. So um, so that's the first, the very first time I heard the word Zenzino. He said, well, you have a look at this company. He said, because the stuff that I've got going on, good friend of ours is involved in the business. And she thinks that this could really help with what I've been through. So straight away, I'd literally that morning... I'd written two chapters of a huge, big research document about the, the power and the impact of getting your omega-3 ratio right. And I was drawing evidence in from multiple areas. So I thought, okay, it's Tony and it's omega-3. It's not going to hurt to go and have a look. And I still, as I said at the start of this call, I still expected to go on, have a quick look and go, yeah, Tony, it's rubbish. Go and eat some fish. <laughs> And, and that was where it started. And being the kind of person I am, you know, it all looked great. I thought the website looked great and what they're promising looks great, but anyone can make promises. Um, so what's the certification like? So I went and checked all that and all the certification stacks up. So, okay. Now I'm one of those people. I'm fortunate enough for a lot of people. You have a look and they tell you they've got the certificate and you have to trust them, but I'm not. I have access to the other end. I can go and look where these are registered and I can look at those lists. So I was so impressed. It's one of those, I don't know if you've, uh, I don't know if anyone listens ever experienced this. You know that old saying, if something's too good to be true, it probably is. Well, that just made me more suspicious. So I thought, well, this looks so good that it can't be good. So I'm, I'm going to catch them out. I'm going to save my friend, Tony. So I went and, I, and every single certificate batch number, I went and cross-referenced it. And by this time, a, a mutual friend of ours, Neil Parsley, who is arguably one of the greatest s &C coaches in the world, Tony had spoken to him and, and Neil's on the phone going, has Tony spoken to you about this Omega-3 stuff? What do you think of? And I was, I'd, I'd spent a fair bit of time on it. And I was like, it looks really, really good. I was like, you know, I'm, it's too early to say. I've only spent a couple of hours on it, but this looks really, really good. This, this, this looks like... I don't know what to say. Call me back later. So um, I went through everything. I thought, I'm not going to stop because I'm going to find it. I'm going to find the bit that's not there. And I Googled them and saw all the nonsense and all that rubbish. Um, I wasn't interested, not interested in any of that kind of stuff. 
I just kept looking at the product and what they were saying and what it was about and the ingredients and how it was reported. <clears throat> and then I thought, you know what? It's really easy to be cynical, isn't it? And it's a good defense to have. But I actually then started to go, no, this is it. You've, you've, you know, you've found the answer that you've been looking for. You've mm -hmm. found what you've been saying people should do. It, here it is now. Here, here it is now right in front of you. And I rung up Tony and I said, this looks really good. This, this checks out. And I said, but I'm still not 100% until I can speak to some of the researchers behind it. That's what I need to do because I've got questions that the website can't answer. So they went off and had a chat. This was the first time I met Vibeka. I don't know how many people on here have spoken to or heard from Vibeka. Yeah. And she said, yep, Paul Clayton, happy to jump on a Zoom and have a chat if you want. So I was like, great, brilliant, let's, let's do that. And I knew Paul, or I, knew, I didn't know Paul, I knew of Paul prior to this because of the work he's done. And because of his associations, you know, he's been associated with a department down at Oxford. Um, you know, some of his, his work that he's done, you know, he's had quite a monumental impact across the area of nutrition over the years that he's been active. So I knew I was going to speak to someone who was legit and the real deal. So I got onto the call and you know what? He was a, he was a complete gent and we had a great chat and I asked him questions and he was really, um, what's the word? really accommodating he was happy to go to town on it and you know we really explored stuff and we I, I wanted to know things about the ratio exogenous versus endogenous so like you know what we consume versus what happens at a cellular level we had a good chat and a good debate about stuff and it came off that and then tony and these people were like so what do you think now Carl? what do you think now do you still think it's good and I said, yeah, I do. Yeah, I think it's great. And I think you should take it 100%. Um, and I think from a business point of view, you should look at this because, you know, in the right hands, this is probably going to take over the world because the world needs it. Yeah. So definitely, 100%. I, you know, up until then, there was never a product. So I might say to an athlete, you know, again, you need to increase your protein a little bit. But I wouldn't say, go and buy their protein. I'd say, this is what you need to look at, increasing your protein. This was the first time in my entire professional career that I was saying, no, you need to take the Zinzino Balance Oil. No, you need to take Extend. No, you need to take Zinzino Protect. That was the difference. It was like, I'm not interested in the others. Fish oil is rubbish. Don't even touch it. You need to take the Balance Oil. That's what you need to take. Um, so, that, so it kind of, it commenced from there. Then off the back of that, if everyone's not going to sleep you, <laughs> they were doing calls like this. And they were going, we're going to ask our mate Cole to come and, Dr. Cole, come and talk to them about the science. And I said, listen, <clears throat> as I don't work for Zinzino, I'm not representing Zinzino. I've got no part in this other than talk about the science. So if anyone asks me a question, they're only going to get a straight honest answer um, based on the science. I'm, you know, I'm, no one's given me any money and I don't want anyone's money. I'm only going to give them the answers for the science. And they said, yeah, come on and talk. So I would talk through the science to a few people. I did at least four, five, six, seven. Then I got some really good questions off people, answered those kind of things back and too. And then I was getting asked to do more and more of them. I was like, guys, I do act genuinely. I have a, a lot on. I've got a job and I'm immense. I'm part of a lot of committees and boards around the UK and, and you know, I've got stuff, other stuff and it's, it's nice once in a while to not work for five minutes. Um, and then V Becker <clears throat> flew over to the UK and said, could we have a chat? Would you, would you come and meet us? And they said, look, you know, we really like what you're about and we really like your ethic. And we like the fact that you take no nonsense and that you're not prepared to compromise yourself would you be interested in coming and working with Zinzino? Would that be something that you'd consider? And I genuinely, you know, I thought, yeah, because all I've ever wanted to do <laughs> was change the world. All I've ever wanted to do was make everyone in healthy, was to tell people to help themselves because the, we get bombarded. On average, the average person gets exposed to 5,000 um advertisements messages a day 
and big, huge, multi-billion pound companies are bombarding the way people think. So all I've ever wanted to do was give people a port in the storm and go, just, just, you know, knock out all the noise. You can have faith in this. This is going to help you to feel better. And when you feel better, you can live better. You can think differently. You can have more positive thoughts, constructive thoughts. You'll feel differently about yourself and you'll start to find the joy in life again. You know, simple things. Um, and there's only so much you can achieve being a hardcore researcher. I promise you, because you know who reads our research? Other researchers. <laughs> Small group it takes a long time to reach the people who need it. So when they said, look, would you be interested? And so I went over to Sweden just to give you the full story. Yeah. I flew over to Dag rung me up. I don't know if anyone's ever spoke to Dag. He's a unique character. <laughs> he rung me up and said, will you come to Sweden this week? So, you know, <laughs> and I went, yeah, okay. And he said, right, get a flight, get out here and come and spend a few days with us. So literally a day later, I was on a flight, arrived in Gothenburg, picked up from the airport, straight to head office, all day ahead office, all evening with Dag. We went for a walk around the harbour. Dag said, we're going to go for a walk and have a meeting. I thought, great, yeah. He said, make sure you got walking shoes on. I thought, no problem. We walked 10K. And I kid you not, we, we, we were power walking the whole way town. But I thought, this will do for me. That's my kind of person. I can work with someone like that. And we walked all the way around into the night. And it was great. It was a water and all, everything lifted the lid off everything, what he was about, I was about Zinzino, the philosophy, the mission. Went to bed, up early, back on it, full day again, head office with Henrik, Jacob, going through every aspect of how the business ticks, what they do, what they're about. And I was literally blown away, literally blown away. And I came home and I got home, I think it was the Saturday afternoon, came back to my place here and I've got, you know, we have a nice little place here, a bit kind of out the way a little bit. And my wife said to me, what do you think then? I said, yeah, this is it. I'm going to take it. And without being kind of, and I don't mean this to be arrogant whatsoever, because I'm not, you know, I'd, I've had job offers over the years that, you know, just weren't for me. It wasn't right. It wasn't going to move me forward and it wasn't going to move anyone else forward. And I remember coming home from this and going, yeah, this is it. You know, this is going to be a, an adventure. And and I think we're going to do a whole heap of good and we're going to set a new standard whilst we do it. So you, you couldn't, it's, it'd be so hard to turn down, wouldn't it? It'd be really hard to turn down. So that is pretty much <laughs> the full the full story of, of where it all came from and how it got involved. And, you know, it's easy, isn't it? There's like a honeymoon period. <laughs> um, but I tell you now, from, from day one, back in December, you know, from day one of actually starting to where we are today, which has been, today's been, you know, we've had a lot on today and we've got a lot on all week. Just great people to work with. I, I love the, I love the ethos. I love the expectation, the demand, the drive. I love the fact that, you know, they sweat the details on everything. They, they consider, you know, the product's my concern. That That's considered down to the i mean we are talking we're currently working on something i don't think i'm allowed to say what it is yet but we're, we're working on something and we we are down to the microgram of specific parts and what difference that will make if we tweak it this way that way and then as a philosophy as a business you know uh, they are so customer and partner centered they the the value of the customer and the partners is, is the umbrella everyone works under, you know, that, that is the priority is that those people are looked after, you know, and it's, it's, it's kind of those two are equal. What, what we create and what we provide has to match with the standard that, and the, you know, the rate at which we, we hold these people here. So, yeah. I love it. It's good. It's going to be exciting. Very much so. And w welcome to the team. I mean, it's just great to have you on board. The product team is amazing. And to have you as part of that team 
just makes it stronger. I really appreciate your time tonight, and I'm sure everyone would, you know, give you a big congratulations and round of applause if there was in a room, but we do it here. And, uh, you know, look forward to working with you, Dr. Colin, and um, look forward to spending more time with you in the future. Thanks for your time tonight. You're a gent, Steve. I'm just going to say one last thing, because I know I said it last time. There's more people arguably listening now. When I was going through that whole sussing people out and meeting people, I said it before, and I'll say it again only because it's true, that coffee you and I had, Steve, when we caught up, that, that had a huge impact on it, because I knew I was going to be working directly you over in the UK. And I could tell straight off the bat how genuine and sincere you were. And genuinely, if, if it were not for that, I might have had a different decision because who you work with is everything. You know, that's where trust comes from. You've got to have absolute faith in, in the team. You really do. So uh, thank you, Steve. Thanks for tonight. And thanks for being a big part of what brought me into the business. Thanks, Colin. Good night, everybody.